Talking with words. Welcome back to Talking with Words. You're here with Rob, Ryan, Adam, and we have a very special thing we're going to do tonight. Event, I would almost call it. We convinced somehow the phenomenal author, uh, Jonathan Mayberry, to give us a copy of his book before it comes out, which is Cave 13. If you have not heard of Jonathan Mayberry, he is a Bram Stoker Award winner. I mean, the dude has how many awards? Hundreds? A lot. Oh, yeah. And New York Times bestseller. Yep. Across the board. Oh, yeah. Joe Ledger is... I mean, how do you define it? It's a mixture between like Tom Clancy and Stephen King with a whole lot of a uh, smidge of sci-fi thrown in there too. And a lot of research. It's yeah. The man does his research. Yeah. And he has, did we count how many Joe Ledger books there are? Cause he's got short stories. He's got however many novels and it went from the DMS, which was for, 12, I think, and then it became, let me R- slow down. Rogue Team International. RTI. Yes. It started off with Department of Military Sciences, and lately it is now Rogue Team International. And before we get into a quick review of what we thought of Cave 13, let's just do a quick backdrop on the entire thing. As you can see, I don't have all of the paperbacks. I bought some on audiobook and whatnot. The guy, uh, I don't know if he's trying to catch up to Stephen King or what the hell's going on, but <laughs> he's been putting out like paper. Uh, this is the last, this is under 10 years probably worth of his, his work here. He started with a basic, I wouldn't say basic actually, a zombie book, Patient Zero. It's anything but basic. Uh, not, not, yeah, not traditional zombies. I took it back. And worked his way through, what did we say? He went through zombies, vampires, gene manipulation, cloning, AI, aliens, war machines, touches of HP Lovecraft, mind control, weaponized Time travel diseases. stuff at one point. Yeah. And he's also doing a little bit of the, the universe building because Joe Ledger, which is the protagonist of these books, appears in almost all of his other books. We talked about that, Adam, with the flash forward in the Lovecraft one where he appears on the, the school bus. Yep. What was that? Kagan or the Deep Pines? Deep Silence. Well, that one's deep. actually from Dead of Night. Right. Dead of Night. But in also the Deep Silence novels, deep uh, Silence, Crow mentions, Malcolm Crow mentions that he knows a guy. Oh, you're talking about the, the Pine Deep trilogy? Yeah, and that one as well. Because we have Ink that came out, what, last year? Two years ago? Two. Yes. So he's, he's building his universe. So, so you know, aside from the Joe Ledger series of books, which we have mostly here, there's also the Pine Deep trilogy, I think. Are they in there as well? There's a couple of them uh, over there, yeah. But also, you know, Rob was mentioning it, like his <clears throat> just rate of writing. While all this is going on, he's launched a new trilogy, Kagan yeah. the Damned, right. uh, which is supposedly, what, like 50,000 or 50 million years in the future kind of thing. And I think uh, he's finishing it with the third, isn't he? Third book should be coming out. Second one was Holy Shit Ending, Cliffhanger, yeah. which he does pretty well. But we're not book. here to talk about Kagan. We're here to talk about KF-13. <laughs> was that <laughs> was that enough of a... <laughs> ah. Now, if you haven't read these these books, don't stop. Finish that video. But there are characters that I think deserve just a second of our time. This is our first review pre-review is that what you call it of a book that's about to come out it actually comes out tomorrow yep so tuesday august 29th cave 13 releases to the public and we were lucky enough to get a pre-copy we i think ryan more than anybody did a quick study on all of them have you read them all oh yeah yeah i've in the last 18 months i've gone through the entire joe ledger book thanks yeah the whole joe ledger series Oddly enough, I, st- I started with Rage and Relentless. And you worked your way. way back when. You went back. Um, and then I started back over at uh, Patient Zero. Yeah. I went through Rob, all of them. But. 
Rob hooked me after he, he told me about Patient Zero. I gave it a shot. And then the second book in the series is called Dragon Factory. And after reading that one, I was hooked by yeah. Gil. Like it was fan it was just off to the races after that. And I, I didn't realize how recently when I started, because it I've been reading them. Um, I think I got in at, at book three or four because I read the first three books. I read about a book a week. So I got to the third or fourth book, and I was like, oh, I'm caught up. Shit. But he started writing originally nonfiction, fighting martial arts uh, books. Martial arts books. Yeah. yeah. Which, if you read any of his other books, they totally translate that into some of the best action sequences uh, of this generation of writing, in my opinion. I know Adam and I have talked about, talked about this a lot, how he writes badass action sequences because he knows what he's talking about. Like, it's one of those things that, okay, I know this, so I'm going to make this as good as I can. And he crushes. They're really technical. They're, they're a lot more technical than a lot of other books I've read from an action standpoint and just how detailed and specific it is, Well, they're, which they're, is refreshing. They're visual. Like, while you're reading, you know, he'll he'll mention things like, he pivots on the ball of his feet and, you know, is able to, to slam the dagger down into the guy's, you know, artery in his leg. And you're like, I'm, I'm visualizing that. And that can, that can be a hard thing to, to, to write. And he's just a fantastic job of it. Yeah. It seems like he has no problem yeah. just knocking it out. So before we get into cave 13, I did want to ask, and I'm also going to go through uh, some of the best characters of the, the books. What, would be like one of your favorite fights in the Joe Ledger series and all of you've read. Adam, I'll start with you. Oh, man. Joe versus, I think, Rafael Santoro. The first one? I think so. That one is amazing. But but it's it's not only just the fights. They're visceral. They're amazing. Mayberry always writes Joe how he kind of like pushes himself to his physical limits, and those Santoro fights yeah. are freaking awesome. And I'm not going to lie, this is a little spoiler territory, but, like, sometimes they go a little unfinished, and now we got a little manhunt in the next book. I'm not going to tell you which ones. Go read it for yourself. But that makes it even more key. It makes it more amazing. And it becomes, like, a, a hunt. Like, yeah. this is, I'm going to finish this. And it becomes, like, personal for not only Joe, but for but the, the, antagonist. The, the villain. And it's awesome. It's yeah. super cool. But there are also non-action sequences that Joe does. I can't, I can't spoiler that, but uh, let's just say Joe goes to some places that uh, a good hero does not need to go. He's, he's yep. well-rounded. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, the Santoro fights are really good. They're very vivid. Honestly, I think my two favorite fights were at the beginning of Patient Zero. One, where he's fighting a zombie and doesn't realize he's fighting a zombie oh, until yeah. he's... Oh, yeah. You know, on kill number three it's for the same guy. Three lethal. Uh, yeah, three three lethal moves, and the guy just keeps on coming. And then the fight that positions him as team lead of the first team. Oh, yeah, with with the new uh, who's right. going to be the lead, but they don't know it. Oh, they so they just they stick him in a room, and they're like, you guys got two minutes. Let's figure this out. Yeah, and he figures it out pretty and quick. He figures it out real quick and just, I mean, the – the, I'm not going to say the fight scene is amazing, but the dialogue and everything that happens around that fight is really entertaining because the fight itself is only about 45 seconds. Well, um, what, what comes out of that fight, too, is, you know, he's like, okay, your team lead. He's like, okay, cool. All right, so where's my team? And the reply is, you just kicked All those ass. guys that you yeah. just beat the shit out of. And so that, that's not a good start. I that's mean, all, that also gives us Bunny and Top, which are yeah. phenomenal they, characters, and they reference it in Cave Thirteen. They still go back and reference that first yeah. fight in the yeah. in the briefing room or whatever it was. I'm not there yet. Awesome. There's there's a couple that I like stick with me. One of them, uh, I believe it's from Dragon Factory, where he needs the guy to tell him something, and it's this big hulking dude. And instead of killing him, he just keeps slapping him. And he slaps him over and over to the point of the guy's just broken while they're fighting. The guy's <laughs> swinging at him. Another slap. Yeah. If you've ever been slapped in the face, that shit sucks. <laughs> and this is a... It's kind of demoralizing. Ledger is... <laughs> he's about my size. Probably bulkier, obviously. But 
he's slapping you in the face 10, 12 times while he's taunting you. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll do a, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> that one and then the one at the very end of Relentless before Centaur, I'm not going to say what it is, where you think there's something coming and he goes in and says, nope, and just tits to taint disembowels somebody because he's like i'm fucking tired of this shit and he pulls a joe ledger move and this is it we're done yep and moves on and that's one of those both of those show different sides of who he is as an operator and both of those stuck with me pretty strong through the whole series well and and throughout the series too it's really fun is no matter what kind of enemy he faces in all of this paper in front of us here but after the first book, oh man, it's two in the chest, one in the head. From there on, he's just he just does oh, not yeah. take any chances whatsoever. You you pull back on some of that morality clause after you realize we're fighting things that uh, are going to destroy the entire world in a heartbeat. Well, and if it gets out, the stakes are a little higher. Yeah, and I don't know if you're one who who next you want to talk about, but but that's a good lead in for Rudy. Yeah, I've got. I was going to say let's talk about the bads and the goods because Rudy. Let's go go with that. Yeah. Yeah. So so with all of this action packed hero protagonist killing machine, the good guy Scorpion, I think he's mentioned yeah. as a couple times throughout the Church series. Pet Scorpion. It's awesome. Part of his part of his humanity. He's he's a fractured man because he has to deal with all this stuff. Anyway, I'll uh, shorten this, but like uh, his best friend and therapist is uh, was it Rudy Sanchez? Yep. Yep. And Rudy. Uh, famously in the book, they said he sounds like Raul Julia from the Adams. I always love that. <laughs> yes. And so. and and the audiobook reader, if you do audiobooks, uh, does a fantastic job. By the way, also the audiobooks for these, Ray Porter. Ray Porter is man. a genius. Fantastic. Yeah. Amazing. Twelve stars out of five. But um, <clears throat> but he does <laughs> he does Rudy really well. We're good at math here. But he always <laughs> he always grounds Joe. Uh, what what's the statement that is always gets said? It's uh, uh, violence tends to leave a mark. Yeah. Uh, whether it's justified or not. So um, he always has Rudy to talk to. So our crazy animalistic protagonist does have like the best friend shrink. Which and is something a, you don't see. And like a, Tom Clancy, they don't talk about going to see the shrink and shit like that. Yeah, it's and it's the, his best buddy. It's, yeah. it's super unique to this series and it's so well done. And he dives into it pretty deep in some of the books. Yeah. Especially when, I mean, if you go through some of the shit that... Joe Ledger goes through in this uh, sci-fi uh, militarized series, you're going to be fucked up. And the fact that he takes the time to do that is something that I don't see in really any other series that I can think of to the degree that he does it. He takes the time. Yeah. And I think, I think Mayberry has been on record saying that, you know, part of where that comes from is in his research. He's got a lot of friends that have seen a lot of combat time and do have PTSD in it, and it obviously has made a mark on them. So he created a really, really great character for that. Absolutely. And then, I mean, you want to talk about Church for a second? You take the cue on that one. All right. So <laughs> Church is the this guy that developed the, the entire department that these books are about. The DMS is the original Department of Military Sciences, then it kicks over to RTI, which is Rogue Team International. He, we don't know, we assume for the most part that he's human, but this is a cold, calculated motherfucker. And we also know that when he goes into a fight, you pretty much can't beat him. Even Joe, our ultimate, you know, James Bond badass, uh, would probably lose to him. And if you read the books, you know that he has some insight some maybe uh healing what i can't figure it out quite yet we've talked about it a hundred times probably yeah uh, in, drinking at night but in in this series mr church has some sort of ability no one knows how old he is something seems very special about him i mean in, in with all of this paper in front of us on the table look at all that information how many pages are there how much information how much world building character building still don't know that much about him yeah uh, and that's what makes him fun he's he's an enigma he's a mystery he's the m but he's a yep. badass but he's uh, an m that <laughs> goes out and kicks the shit out of people and heals from gunshots in three days yeah and everybody is all in the books they're always like i thought he'd be dead 
Yeah, he's like, church or deacon or bishop or yeah. you know he's got all these different names through the past. It's it's uh, super fun. He's Saint gov- Germain. Saint Germain. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's gov- government ties. He's everything. fun. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about some of the ba- big bads. If you start at the beginning, my favorite is still Sebastian Galt. He was insane in all the right ways. I loved him. That's the an early bad guy. We got Vox. You got Hardcore Bolton, which is Kuga. Yeah. Uh, these bad guys are not just your. There are some that I want to make money. I want to uh, switch this so the stock market flips. But didn't you have the ones that are like, hey, let's kill everyone because then the people that are the cream of the crop will rise and shit like that. And everyone has a different niche. Uh, it's not just bank robbers, which I like a lot. Uh, and you've got people like Ultimate Bad Nicodemus, uh, which we assume is some sort of godlike, is like is, a Loki type creature. Is Nicodemus Lovecraftian? Like, is there something in in H.P. Lovecraft that goes into that? Because I'll, I, f- I get that vibe because yeah, because. Yeah. Like and, an elder god type of thing. Well, it's it's uh, because he's used him, and you know we we teased Keg in the Dam trilogy uh, earlier as well. Spoilers: this character also shows up in like that series. Yeah, um, I'm not giving too much away there, but like, so it makes us question: what the fuck? He reminds me, uh, if you're a Stephen King fan, of. Randall Flagg, Man in Black. He's got that kind of like trickster. Loki, you know, he just is that kind of like, the yeah. dude just keeps turning up and he keeps playing the game. And maybe that's his whole it's, purpose. We don't yeah. know. We haven't figured that out yet. It's yeah. kind of the dark opposite of church. Yeah. A lot and, of the time. And church seems to be him and Lilith, which is one of the other good, the white, I guess, side of this. Yeah, Mothers uh, of the Fallen. They both yeah. know him from however long ago. We don't know. <laughs> And and the interesting part about uh, you know Rob mentioned earlier with this th- these books span you know like you said what aliens vampires uh, robots <laughs> like all this shit yeah uh, you know we start to look at is immortality a, a a thing in these books makes you question and again Mayberry does such a good job of keeping a lot of these things like he tells us what we need to hear but he doesn't tell us what we want to hear. Yeah, he's tight lipped. Uh, he's he's tight lipped on a lot of these like these classified characters. Brings about a mystique that just makes you want to read the next book. Speaking of, yeah, Cave Thirteen it comes out tomorrow. This is the third book in the RTI series after Ledger and Church and the team have switched over to Rogue Team International. This, in my opinion, gets a high grade for what they do with the characters and the action, because it's that level of insanity that you want from a Joe Ledger book, the legend level of action you want from a Joe Ledger book. Uh, they also include some of the smaller characters and give them their own time. Toys has some time in this book that you haven't seen on this level before. That's a great character. Yeah, uh, right toys there. is toys is fun. Yeah, we didn't mention him yet, but uh, to- toys is a fantastic kind of a started off again. As... We don't want to go too far into spoiler territory, uh, but let's just say he he, he was one of the turns. Yeah, he's, he's got a he he started out pretty shitty, but he's <laughs> he's kind of he's kind of made Maybe. some uh, some strides to go back to the the good guys. He, he was on the uh, Sebastian Galt Hugo Vox side of things there for yeah. a book or five. Yeah. <laughs> A book maybe 12 five. i don't know yeah, yeah. Um, maybe nine or ten toys toys is awesome yeah but you also have again church comes out and this book feels more like church is advancing toward the enemy as opposed to reacting especially at the end i don't know if you agree it, with that it, it feels like he's actually deciding i'm gonna go after this yeah usually the the way church developed his team is when a doomsday event is you know initiated by these villains we react in this one once you kind of have the initial startup he's he kind of just he, takes the reins off everything he's like go stop this shit. i mean at one point he straight calls it out he's like all right team we've been uh reactive up to this point we need to start being proactive for yeah. all these unknown 
It feels like it's building up to something bigger. Well, and, and right, and I haven't I haven't made it all the way through the book yet, so I'm that's awesome to hear. Yeah, uh, but I also think that like that's part of the reason they formed RTI in the first place. Like they left the Department of Military Sciences Take that next step to to form Rogue Team International because that was like their mission statement was we're tired of the red tape and reactionary developments. We would rather go hunting. Yeah, uh, and that's one of like Church's phrases through all these books is happy hunting. Happy hunting. Yeah. You know, yeah. he always says that. So, so no, that's awesome to hear. So yeah, RTI can do in an hour what the government takes three months to do. Yeah, yeah. And I think I mean we don't want to go too long on thirteen because you're gonna if you're a if you're a Ledger fan you're gonna read it. Read uh, it. I think the the actions there you've got some of those insane crazy moments of. What the fuck's going on? Uh, he takes the time to build it up. I think the only thing that I thought could have been a little bit better in this one is he took a lot of time with the scrolls uh, to build that up, which he always takes time to build that backstory. Easy, I'm in the middle of that. How right those now. things work. <laughs> I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> but he took quite a bit of time to work through that. And the the reveal you got fairly early from the first bit or the second bit. But it's still, it's not something that is going to make me stop from reading it two or three more times. I mean, it's one of those things. He's a, he's a little long-winded in the that backside of how these got discovered, where they came from, all that. Because he does the history. He does the research. I was going to say, he did, a, he did a whole bunch to tie in all the cultural and religious, aspect, but, but, religious yeah. aspects of the, the scrolls and everything kind of surrounding it, which is a little different from some of the other books. It doesn't usually go into that much. He went into a lot of detail on, this detail one. on yeah. the culture and the religion piece, but, which was cool. But let me ask you something here. We just came off of, so the previous two books were rage and relentless, yep. which were a fucking roller coaster ride. That were, that was, those were two fantastic books that were just balls to the wall. So as an individual book, cave 13, maybe it seems like it's a little slow, but upon reread, would this just be like oh, it a very, reread, very it might be optimal? Fine. Like yeah. I'm, yeah. maybe maybe from Mayberry's perspective, relentless was this is, nonstop. This is that pause that he needs yeah. to reset, retool yeah. for the next adventure. Well, it does. Cape thirteen starts a year after, roughly a year after the end yeah. of Relentless, yeah. and so there's a little building of, like I said, that that proactive piece of it and. Joe getting back into the field because he's been out of the field for a while from his yeah. uh, <laughs> episodes. Relentless episode. Yeah. Becoming we'll leave it at that. Relentless. Yeah. But, uh, so, man, I mean, there, it's, it's just building him up a little bit. Man, just those, what was the last three? Was it uh, Deep Silence, Rage, and Relentless? Yeah. Those were just banger after banger after banger. Like, those are Wonderful books. And they were fast. They're they're hit. Everything is we have to do this right now or else we're fucked. And I'm not gonna spoil too much, but there's a fucking mech suit in one of them. That kicks ass. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, Iron Man. I don't want to go into too much detail with Cave thirteen. I think it was done really, really well. It's it's another stack on uh another star on Mayberry's uh s- scarf. I don't know what the- what do you put stars? What do you I put don't know. Uh, stars? Is it bored? Oh, fuck, I don't know. Um, what am I saying? It, it's solid. It's amazing. I have not read a Mayberry book that I have not liked. And Truth. This is in the top echelon. He's he's writing at his prime. And the guy, he's got like four more books coming out in the next, what, six months? Something like that, yeah. And he's a machine. He said I, I saw something online. He said he hadn't one due in like the end of this week or next week or something. In a rough draft copy one? of one. Oh, oh no, that's no, the Kagan. No. That's the third Kagan. Yep, that's it. Well, another another fun thing with with this book series as well is he'll do small books, small stories in between that that fall in between these novels. Yeah. So there's tons out there, and they're like super fun to read. And he has guest writers come in and do like people that he has become friends with over the years. And, uh, Some of the compilation anthologies. There's one in there yeah. that is an anthology, and it's got multiple people that do – they they take Ledger and they just run with it in their world, and it's fun to read. It's a totally different side. He's done V-Wars. I just lent out. I don't have V-Wars. He did that. 
Uh, there's a TV. There's actually a Netflix series of V Wars that mm-hmm. got produced. Yep. Didn't really work out because it came out about the same time that we had a huge COVID thing, and people weren't really into uh, hearing about how plagues wiped across the planet. Well, I uh, also also think too some of that suffered from uh, Walking Dead, just displeasure. Well, you've got that. Yeah. That show was wonderful, wonderful for a few seasons, but what what did they make it like season eight or nine? And it was we were done 12. with zombies. Really? <laughs> oh, I don't even know. Yeah, I, I don't even know. Uh, yeah, but I just Maybe think 11. some of that may may have played into some of that. What zombie? We were just we were done with. Yeah, it. we were oversaturated. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it just kept going. But it's a wonderful book. I check it out. Yeah, I yeah. think you last thoughts on just K thirteen. Uh, again, thank you, Jonathan Mayberry, for letting us review this on our podcast, Talking With Words. Um, I do want to throw out a little tidbit. If you don't know, Adam did all of my book covers for my books. And in my second book, I made a villain, Brian, who I slightly based off Mayberry. He's a larger man, and he wears a <laughs> Hawaiian shirt. And he is a piece of shit. So that's not <laughs> a... Uh, interpretation of you i just want to do the hawaiian shirt for mayberry <laughs> because i was reading the ledger books at the time so i didn't know if i even told you that i don't think you know I, I haven't so Brian, seen that one yet uh, the whole hawaiian thing with him coming out with that uh huge pistol was a mayberry reference just tossed in there all right We're, we may have to do some artwork for that <laughs> <That'd be fucking laughs> awesome. it's gonna be fun all right if you have not read any of the ledger books go get patient zero start there Cave 13 comes out tomorrow on the 20, what do we say, 29th? 29th. Yep. August 29th, 2023. It's fantastic. And I am looking forward to the third Kagan. And I really want to see what happens after this book because it sets up something. And I'm not going to say anything about it because I don't really know about what they're setting up. But we're, it looks we're like we're going, somewhere, we're going somewhere big, I yep. feel like. Anything else? Just uh Go to Talking With Words and uh, listen to the podcast, all the other episodes, and uh, you can find us there. Yep. <laughs> you silent some bitch. I'm just trying to help you out. I don't want you to board editing, Rob. We are Talking With Words. You can go to robgilchristbooks.com. My books are the Saturnist for Suckers series, which is a sci-fi comedy action, and the Tides of Shadow series, which is a... Uh, zombie Greek mythology Stephen King mashup that is gory fun thank you for listening Uh, we want to thank Jonathan Mayberry for giving us this opportunity to review his book for him five out of five stars I mean absolutely it was awesome always fun and the action is top notch and I think this is where Charlie comes in 